Hey YouTube, it's Zach. It's a beautiful day here in Toronto and inflation numbers came in a little high. People blame this whole inflation and interest rates on the government and the money printing and others blame it on oil and gas companies as well as Loblaws. And since I promised you I'm going to unfold the money printing situation, how money works, I went ahead and booked an interview with Joe Gillisarian, a boomer, a guy with mob ties, an entrepreneur, a former professor, as well as author of the Practical MBA on Economics. This interview was an eye-opening one and it took turns I did not expect. I also added some boomer nuggets for you guys at the very end. Here's the interview. Hey Joe, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad to have you here. I've promised my viewer that I was going to do some research on figure out how the central bank works, inflation, how they make their decisions, how is money printed. They use ink to print money. That's and this it. should be the end of the interview now. Money is printed. It's lent to the government, maybe the Bank of Canada, or the U.S. feds. But let's just look at the U.S. side for a moment. Okay. Um, the U.S. fed since the medical emergency the last two and a half years yeah. has printed approximately five trillion dollars the u.s treasury is overspent that's where you're seeing a ceiling right now of seven trillion that richard cantillion said when more fictitious money chases the same amount of goods you get inflation especially in the states and in canada they are basically printing money and lending it to a bankrupt treasury so what does the central bank do they say oh, okay we're going to print a bunch of money which means they're just going to change the number how does that enter into the system for us to to use the central bank purchases government bonds right okay okay when governments were issuing bonds at one percent zach it's a pretty hard sell right especially when i can make more in real estate and in the equity market so on and so forth they turn around and say, okay, well, we're going to buy this many Canada savings bonds, so on and so forth. I'll keep it simple. The issue is this, the US Treasury or maybe in Canada could not sell enough bonds without help from the central banks. Why would I buy a Canada savings bond? Right. How does that really affect real estate? Well, people believe, oh, the Bank of Canada can control interest rates. There's one problem with that. The bond vigilantes will take over. And they're, I know you like vigilantes. Do you like that part? Right, no, You're, yeah. I think you are a vigilante. You know, I, why don't you wear your tuxedo for this interview with me? I thought you had your James Bond tuxedo. Was it not pressed? This is my Steve Jobs look. I always wear the same shirt if I can. So, boy, oh boy. If the bond market turns around, or if lending standards tighten up because of the M2 money supply, or they just tighten up, in other words, you know, things get shaky. The stock market pulls 20, 30 percent. The real estate market pulls down five, 10 percent. What will happen is lenders will tighten up their lending requirements and they'll go, you know what? I want seven, eight percent for a mortgage. Then you'll see uh, the bond market out of control. The U.S. market buys 10 year treasuries. The central bank doesn't always admit it. They buy them to, to what they call is to suppress and keep down the bond prices. In right. other words, this thing, this whole Ponzi scheme would explode. The reason why they print more of it is for the government to spend. Is that what it is? Bankrupt that, governments. Because you mentioned M2 money supply, and I heard it on the news too, but no. us four-year-olds, we don't understand what that means. So what is an M2? Is there different kinds of money that gets printed? I don't know. It's just a measurement of how much cash is there. And the United States... It's down a few hundred billion dollars in the last two, three months. Is You have to understand, the, the U.S. has $34 trillion of debt, okay? Which, I mean, you don't have to pay it. It's a nice credit line. Well, there's there's a problem. People won't buy their, de their, their debt. Inflation numbers uh, came up yesterday or the day before, I believe. Yes. Inflation numbers went up. Shelter. Well, yeah, it's it's well, it's a real complicated equation, but you have asset price inflation, which I'll get to in the moment. That includes real estates and the equity in the stock markets. Yeah, yeah. But when you're talking inflation on the things we buy on groceries, you've mm -hmm. been having cumulative inflation of seven to nine percent. The CPI index in the United States and in Canada belongs in the fictional section of the library beside Huckleberry Finn and the return of Santa Claus. OK. What they've done is the measurements they use, they go, well, our core inflation doesn't include food and energy. And, you know, they're talking about, you know, your clothing, goods like that, you're doing fine. There's a site on the internet called Shadow Statistics that uses the methodology they did in the 1980s and early 90s and 70s mm -hmm. when Paul Volcker was chairman of the central bank. 
By those meth methods, inflation is at 12 to 13, 11 and a half percent, depending how you take it. Food inflation is 10 percent. We have another problem in Canada, and that is a lot of our fruits and vegetables come in from the States. They come in from Peru. They come in you know, from the warmer sunbelt areas of the U.S. We just can't control inflation. And the other problem is if you keep your, your interest rates low, this is all affects your real estate market. You start importing inflation through what they call currency inflation. This That's inflation why I was saying we're like a franchise of the US because all of the countries that follow the US monetary, like we're best friends. If we don't end up imitating them, so the decisions come from the head office, the US, because they're the reserve currency, they make the decisions based on their economy. And if we don't mimic them, Everything we buy is more expensive. I need to unpack that a bit because if we yeah. don't increase our interest rates close to par with the U.S., yeah. what will happen when your currency weakens, your U.S. imports cost more? Let's keep it to fruits and vegetables. You're going to get overnight inflation for that. Wage-wise, you're more competitive, but you still need raw materials. You know, manufacturing is only a small percentage of our GDP right now in our workforce. And that's where your problem is, because you can outsource a lot of these jobs overseas. Yes, your low interest rates will hurt the Canadian dollar. If it gets weaker, you're going to import inflation. You import inflation, you put pain upon the structure of the economy. There's a lot of people don't that don't really realize how dangerous inflation is because you have two generations that have never seen it. You know, the countries come to the point where we flip real estate in lieu of innovation. You can't build a country debating. You can't build an economy debating. Eventually, you got to, you know, pardon me, you got to deliver the beef. In other words, you've got to create something. If you look at our GDP, probably 90% of it, I'm exaggerating here, 90% of it is real estate. The wealth created in Canada is <laughs> just inflation of, of real estate. If the real estate market collapsed, Okay, the banks are going to go out to the CMHC, meaning the government. Well, the CMHC could not cover, let's say, $4 because they might have no more no. than two, 200 billion. This is the same story in the United States extrapolated. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, using another methodology, has about $175, $180 billion. I'd have to double check it, but I'm close to the truth. Deposits in the United States are close to $17 trillion. So the Fed would then have to print money to keep them in line if you started losing deposits, you had a bank contagion. Do not think that a bank contagion could not hit Canada. Don't think for more, because we're all interwoven. Going back to 1971, if I can print money, and you really worked me over pretty good on that, I have more money for propaganda, more money for wasteful government spending, and it's almost a failure one after another, unmitigated. Yeah. I have uh, more money for war, and away you go. Imagine your house is worth a million dollars but you owe 35 to $40 million on it. And you can't even pay the interest on your mortgage, but yet your lender lends you more money to pay the interest on your mortgage, okay? Yeah. Let me give you the Ponzi scheme. It's all interrelated, and I mentioned it in my book. When the Americans have $34 trillion of debt, at 1%, their budget's about $4.5 trillion. At 1%, when you're issuing bonds, that's like 340, 350 billion dollars. But if you owe 30 trillion, let's keep the number simple for my head now, and interest rates and the 10 year yield goes up to 7%, 7% of 30 trillion is 2.1 trillion, add the other 4 trillion, and you've got 3, uh, 3 trillion, 3.38 trillion dollars. What do you think is going to happen when 45% of your money goes towards the interest on your deficit? Nobody wants to talk about this. And please, don't, you know, don't give me facts and reasoning and empiricity in lieu of my emotion. I, I just want to live with my emotion, right? So people go, what can the government do to help out the economy, the housing market, or inflation? That's like calling the carjacker, okay, to run the valet parking service. That's what they can do. You're, yeah. you're, you know what? You're looking for love in all the wrong places. I think that happened to you, didn't it, Zach? You want even bigger government, don't you? I just can't wait. Huge government printed money. I want I want you to be the next prime minister. Me? Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you so much. Every politician out there is the messiah of the proletarian, the messiah of the plebeians. Yes, we're going to punish the rich, you know, and, you know, they're all compromised. Like my father said, you know, show me any left-wing socialist or communist, Joe. I'll give him a check for a million dollars and see if I can't convert them in 15 seconds. Even Bernie Sanders has three or four 
homes. I think the DNC bought him one to, so he could shut up after they kind of got him out of the last um, uh, uh, election where, you know, they didn't want him to run under the DNC for whatever Bernie reason. Bernie is a good guy, though, no? He's a, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And, I have beer yeah, with him on weekends. Yeah, and, and, he, and he's a nice guy. He's just that one of these socialists or communists that has three or four homes. He's okay. I don't mind them. And, 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 you know, when you come out of college and, and, you know, I went through that, um, you know, Bernie, Bernie, give me more free stuff. Well, anyways, going there, here's what happens to the wealth inequality gap is you've got, let's say inflation goes up on homes 7% to 10% a year. I can't say my homes with, let's say million dollars, it's going up $70,000 a year. Okay. So at that point there, my, my, what happens is if you, the, the the very poor, unfortunately, don't have assets that appreciate. But if you got a condo that's worth 600,000, goes up 50, 60 grand a year, your, your wealth of the upper middle class and rich is going up. On the lower middle class, it's going down. That is a classical example of inflation on the people who can least afford it. What you're saying right now, it just brings it clear, which yeah. means you have a bigger government. I'm going to get rich if I have a home. Very tough. I probably could not afford the home that I live in now if I had to buy it at today's prices. And a lot of people would say that. As people with assets, their prices appreciate. Mm -hmm. And those without assets, you create this wealth inequality gap. This is all the result of government. And you can pick your parties. I'm not going to go down that avenue. I'm going to give you more dental care. I'm going to give you a slicer and dicer. You know, I'll give you an iPhone if you vote for me. Because right? yeah. people without iPhones are obviously victims. You know, if I sent you a chart on Titler, it's a circle. We go from enlightenment, from oppression, to enlightenment, to productivity, to apathy, to then dependency, and back to tyranny. And you know what? We're not on the doorstep of freedom. The problem is people, and, and I've said this on a show before, people in the West go, well, uh, freedom's just a given. No, it's only a small splinter of human history and, and it can be taken away. Is there going to be any reckoning? Like, is how, how do we fix this? Can we ever fix it or should we just redistribute wealth? Those ideas are good for, you know, 20, 21 year old wide eyed students that just came out of university and read Das Capital and Rules for Radicals and some of those other intellectually inspiring books. The great reckoning is, oh, no, we've got another idea. Uh, we're going to come up with central bank digital currency. So you're saying we're not going to save the dollar. We're just going to let it go. And then we're just going to create a digital currency so we can. OK. Well, we won't create it. The central bank will. Uh, yes. Of right. course. I wish I created the, the yeah, exactly. central bank currency, and, but I'm not the central bank. Yeah. And there's so many, you know, I've spoken about that. That's a separate conversation. The tyranny. I know where you went, what you did. Right now, the government doesn't know that I bought a chocolate bar at the variety store. We'd right? like to know, though. That would be nice. They'd like to know that, you know, someone like Zach interviewed Joe Galisarian. And well, you completely twist it and corrupt it in my mind, right? Plus, they and, would like to know if I paid you or you paid me. Though, yeah, yeah. Know, right? yeah, coffee here and there, know. a sandwich or something like that. Just a cheap sandwich. McDonald's is the best place I take you to. Big Mac? I'm going to go get Big Mac. Yeah, right and you, should, you know what? You shouldn't wear your chains when you like that when you go to McDonald's. You, you might get rolled, man. I'm going to talk to your kid. But in seriousness, that's the reckoning. The government's become insolvent. You show up with your container to get loaded in China and say, how much do I owe? The guy goes, used to be 60,000 US dollars. He goes, I'm sorry, we're not taking dollars. Um, I got another currency. It's backed by gold or I want gold. This party cannot go on forever. We had easy money. We have inflated balance sheets with the feds. We have bankrupt treasury, right? And what happened is quite simply put, happy hour is over. Happy hour is over. No more cheap drinks. Everybody's got to drink Kool-Aid now, okay? Jeez, Schlurpees okay. and Kool-Aid. That's all That's you get fun. now. It'll um, be titillating, yeah. For, for all the viewers, I heard if we hit 100 likes, the central bank is going to stop creating the central digital currency. Is that correct, Joe? Uh, did I hear Yes. It? Yes? Yes. So what I, do they need to do? They just need to like this video, and that will guarantee that probably Tiff Macklin would stop entertaining the central bank currency. Yes, yes. And if they subscribe, maybe tell them that you'll give them a, 
a, a, a pristine version of the Thriller album by Michael Jackson, you know, so they can put it okay, in their don't collection. Don't subscribe. Here I, I don't know where to get something like that from. So well, don't, I don't subscribe. know. Subscribe. Just, just like, so Joe, you have a book that you wrote, which you have a picture of it right behind you there. The mm -hmm. Practical MBA for Economics. Uh, you want to mm -hmm. tell me about it? On the Practical MBA on Economics, because my background's all been running businesses, right? You know, I came from health and beauty care. Mm -hmm. But on the Practical M MBA on Economics, is designed to make you whole. I took the most pragmatic, practical things out of the MBA in Economics, took out the gibberish, um, because I know when I went to business school, there was a lot of abstract theories and some real heavy-duty math. And what I did is I talked about everything from sovereign debt default from Peru, Argentina, how the Roman Empire fell. I brought it. I showed you intergovernmental debt and the, the and the deposing of the British pound, how the U.S. dollar took took forth the history of the Great Depression and why FDR made it come a two year deep recession and turned it into a twelve year. Uh, a depression, which is a totally different subject. I take you through all the stock market crashes, the history of gold. I bring you up to the doorstep of Bitcoin, and I then create the cabal, the cabalotocracy, and the dystopian future of tomorrow. So, you know, you you will understand the role of the IMF. You will understand the, war, um, the role of the World Bank. You will find uh, what the role of the Bretton Woods system was, which was the great reset of the uh, last century. In other words, Put differently, it's it's a book. It's full. It's it's fun to read, but you know you'll get a lot of intellectual wealth out of it. When you finish reading this book at your next party, you'll be the smartest person in the room. You, but if my viewers want to get the book, uh, where where can they get it from? It's it's on Amazon. I'll have the link for you guys in the description. You know you you'll see the whole picture of how this toxic mess came about over a thousand years, especially the last hundred and thirty years. Okay. And, you know, uh, and, and I went on about FDR, but that's another story. Just incidentally, um, he did not solve the Great Depression. When the Americans, after Pearl Harbor, went to war, uh, within a month, inflation, not inflation, unemployment, the unemployment rates, I think the U3 went down from 14 down to 1.5%. That's what solved the Great Depression. Nothing FDR did. And this is going to go on with the Great Recession, which was another colossal mess. You've had no more than one and a half percent to two percent GDP growth. In 2018, the Fed tried to increase interest rates to two and a half, three percent. The stock market started collapsing, right? So there's no way out. There's no way out. What's the Fed going to do? If you're the central bank, you've got toxic accounts receivables on your books. We're right? going to see a rate cut very soon, whatever we do. They'll do a rate cut and it'll be another cycle, you know, and people will stand up, see, and in real estate, especially see the rate cuts helped real estate and then the wealth inequality gap goes up. So I would consider that if you want to solve this problem, you can turn around and call Batman, I don't know, Superman. I have no idea, you know, uh, something like that. Or you can call Zach. You know, oh, Zach, uh, so solves all the problems. Yeah, I, I yeah. gotta tell you, I'm very good friends with Tiff Macklem, so we'll, I'm sure me and him will figure it out. Oh, this is this is fantastic. You know, I think you're the problem. I'll tell you what, you're, I think your wife is the problem. Oh, come on, don't be a, don't be a boomer. <laughs> yeah, don't be a boomer. Hang on, because I'm listening to YouTube. Okay, and you can hear it. Oh, you know what you need to do? Let me, let me show you. Go hold, on. Your... hold on, let me put on a YouTube channel. Hang on, brother. Hang on. Uh, I can fix it for you. Click, you see? Yeah, you I hear button? YouTube perfectly. Okay. So you called my AirPods names and you know what? Uh, you hurt my feelings and and I'm going to have to find a safe room. <laughs> okay, let me help you fix this. Go to your Zoom page. Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Join okay. meeting. I don't need to sign up for Zoom, do I? No. No, no, no. You you have you have the okay. just go to my face. Like okay, I'm there right now. Okay, the, at the bottom there's a little mic. Do you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, there's a little triangle right next to it, pointing up. If you click on it, sure. It says select microphone, select speaker. Why don't you change the speaker to your MacBook AirPods or whatever they're called? Yeah, microphone. Microphone's the the special one you're using. Are you actually using the special right. mic? Or is it like mine a little? Yeah, I just changed it. Headset, AirPod. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, microphone, Logitech, bro. Uh, how's that? Okay, microphone's good. Can you hear me? 
No, not through my ear pods. Oh. I can like you're here, me and uh hold on, hold on. Select the speaker. Yes, speaker. Hold on. Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay. Problem One more time. Solved. Problem solved. Yeah. Hold on. No. Now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, I hear you perfectly. That's what it was. You see, you know, Zach. I got to tell you, you're such a perfect guy. That's the only mistake you've maybe made in your whole life. What, me not figuring out how to put AirPods? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, but the not helping a boomer. Okay. And plus, you called me a boomer name. You called my AirPods names. I'm Look, just I like- I AirPods to too. I love them, but I use it with a proper Mac and, a, and an iPhone. You have an iPhone, you said, right? What's, or, what's a Mac? Are you talking about a big Mac here? Or what are we talking about? A big I should Mac get some or? after this, uh, this uh, beautiful interview. Thank you so much. 